Hello, shalom. It's another Sunday. Welcome to our online um, Sunday service. This is King's Touch Church. Um, Pastor Siam Dominosi here. Um, I would like us to begin with uh, um, um, with some praise and worship, and then we will pray a little and go through the word in a short um, session, and then. Um, We'll have a good day. There's an old song. Uh, so the psalmist is calling people to come and and just praise and worship God. And and I like the the, the verse. He says, "One day every tongue will confess that He is God, and one day every knee will bow." But still, the greatest treasure is to those who choose to gladly worship him now um i like the verse that says um the the the, the praises of the saints who are alive um, 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 are much better um, and and we know that when you're dead you can't really praise god but we also know that um there are angels in heaven that are worshiping and praising god with us and whenever we praise and worship, we also welcome the presence of the angels. So know that it's not just you and your family members in the house, but also um, um, there, are, there is the presence of angels, and the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord is welcomed there. So let's just praise Him. Oh, 
come Now is the time to worship Come Now is the time to give your heart Oh come Just as you are to worship Come Just as you are to give your heart Come One day every tongue will confess you are God One day every knee will bow Still the grace, the treasure remains to those Who gladly choose you now one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every new will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. We have come to give you praise. We have come. To worship your name we have come To lift you high we have come To praise Yeshua we have come With all we have we have come With all we know we have come We have hearkened to the invitation of the Lord just we are, we have come. As we are, we have come. Just as we are, we have come to give you praise. Just as we are, we have come. Just as we are, we have come. Just as we are, we have come to worship you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you always call us into your presence. And you do not take it for granted, you don't take it lightly. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. And we say thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for dying for us on the cross. We thank you for the amazing grace. Thank you for the amazing grace that saved a people like us, that saved those who were fearful, that saved Thank you for bringing broken pieces back into one place. Thank you for mending broken hearts. Thank you for putting together that which was once scattered. Thank you, oh God. We say thank you for, for restoring the relationship with the Heavenly Father through the work of the cross. Hallelujah. All these pieces broken and scattered Mercy gathered, mended and whole. Empty handed, but not forsaken. I've been set free, I've been set free. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind. 
blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see you now. I can see your love in your eyes, laying yourself down, raising up the broken to Oh, I can see you now I can see your love in your eyes Laying yourself down Raising up the broken to Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. raising the broken to life. Thank you for the love in your eyes. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And thank you for your word. And thank you for your presence. Thank you for your faithfulness. Because we know that it is our shield and our backlight. Thank you, oh God, for being good to us and for being merciful to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, it's good to be in the presence of God. It's, it's good to... It's amazing when we set time aside to just worship Him, praise Him, and, and listen to what He has to say, or at least read from His, from his book. Um, today I want us to still be reminded or encouraged on the importance of uh, the word of God in our lives. I, I, I've been there, my spirit has been there. Somehow I can't get away from that. 
So today I, I want us to, to go through the word and still, I'm still studying the book of James. And um, we will still go through um, the book of James and expound just a little bit more on a few verses concerning the word of God. And um, when, when it comes to the word of God, the way, I, the way I understand it, when it comes to the word of God, they're like phases, if I can call it that way. They're like phases to it. You first hear, so you just listen. You just hear what the word says. You just hear what this person has to say. Um, in the Old Testament, um, uh, some of the some of the prophets would, would say, and the word of the Lord came to me and said, the word of the Lord came to me and said, the word of the Lord said. So it's, 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 there are those stages of you first hear. It is first spoken. Just like the way the Lord um, said, let there be light. Or just like the way the Lord said, um, let there be. So the word is first spoken. And when it is spoken, then it is heard. Um, and when it is heard, it is now up to the listener to receive it or reject it. Back in the days when a word would be, would be shared or a word would be spoken, the, the prophets would ask the people, do you receive the word of God? And they would say, yes, we receive it. So that's another stage. But once you have received it, there are, there are few things or there are, there are ways we know that this person has received the word of God because we see the change in their lives. There will be fruits in the, uh, um, 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 as a result of the word of God. Now, now, now I want us to go back to the book of James. I'm still in chapter number one, um, verse 21. And then um, we will we, we will we'll see what we can get from there from from the verses a little bit after that. It says, "So get rid of all uncleanliness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness, and in a humble, gentle, modest spirit receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to save your souls." We have already tried to deal with, with, with um, having the Word of God as our foundation, um, relying on the Word of God because the Word of God is, is, is sweet. The Word of God um, um, strengthens you. The Word of God is what you can rely on. It is true and righteous um, because He is a faithful God. What He says is who He is. He does what He says. But then now uh, I, I want us to, to talk about how to receive the word of God because oftentimes a word is spoken to us and many times we 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 keep wanting to hear some more word while the one we had heard before we have not worked on it we we haven't lived that word um thus uh the next verses verse 22 he talks about being doers of the word. Now, how we receive the word of God is by humility. Because we keep forgetting that it's actually God who is speaking. He uses vessels. And oftentimes you find the people who say, I'm not going to receive that word because it is so and so that spoke. Little do we know it is God who used so and so. So you would rather listen to the word, take the content, even if you have an issue with the vessel, because the word of God is God himself speaking life, speaking his mind to us, speaking his heart to us. So once a word is spoken, we receive it with humility because it's like we are hearing from God himself. So we, we receive it with humility and with meekness. And the word meekness here refers to a total subjection to God's purposes, a willingness to learn from God. Um, because there are many times we can be told something and we feel like, I, I don't think I'm ready for that. I, I don't think I, I think that is too big for me. I think that is too deep for me. But the willingness to learn from God is a way 
we, 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 he will keep speaking to us because he's speaking to a people who are willing to learn. He's speaking to a people who are willing to receive. Now, um, James qualified that word being, uh, the word we spoke about being able, the word is able to save our, our souls. Um, basically, he's talking about the salvation, not just the now salvation, but also at the end that when the Lord Jesus Christ comes for the second time, um, and then we are going to be reigning with him. The word, that word has the ability to give us that eternal salvation. We tried to deal about, uh, to, to deal with that in the, in the last in the last session but then i want us to jump straight into verse 22 it says but be doers of the word obey the message and not merely listeners to it betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth here is where the catch is be a doer of the word a doer is a maker. A doer um, 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 brings in activities um, in whichever that it is that he's supposed to be doing. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying here, y'all. Be a doer of the word. Obey the message. Meaning by obeying the message, you're being the doer of the word. And he says, not only, not merely listeners to it, betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. This is, where, uh, this is where we keep missing it. That's why we, 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 we keep hoping from one prophet to another, from one person to another, because we want to hear another word. You have been spoken to before, but because you are not a doer of the word, because you did not receive the message the way we ought to receive it, and I will go, I'll go through it how we ought to receive it, then we become deceivers of our own selves. We rob ourselves of the blessings when we do not receive the word. He says you become deceitful. You, you, you are lying to yourself. And it is very interesting that it's not God we lie to. It is not the neighbors we lie to. But it is ourself we lie to. When we read the word, do we allow the word to bring forth a change in us? Do we allow the word to birth a new thing in us? Because by doing so, it is a sign that we have received the word. We have obeyed the message. He says in verse 22, For if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it and being a doer of it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror. For he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. Verse 25, he says, But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty, basically the law that Jesus Christ came to fulfill, um, and is faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it, being not a heedless listener to uh, who forgets, but an active doer who obeys, he shall be blessed in his doing, his life of obedience. So listening and receiving the word of God brings forth its own types of blessings. Now, let, let, me, let me go a little bit through my notes. I, I've already said that a doer is, 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 is a maker. Um, but there are those who just listen. And after they have listened, um, 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 the word that, that they use here is, is known as acro, acroati. It's, it's a word describing those who simply listen. They listen to the speech, but they never actually become followers of the teacher. Or at least being a devotee of the material that is taught. These people, they just listen and they leave it with the teacher. They don't go away with anything. So these are the type of people that when, when, they, when they probably you're done with the service on Sunday or something, or when they have listened to a particular uh, someone, when you ask them, what did you learn? They'll just tell you, ah, that speaker, that that, that, that speaker is eloquent. That, that, that preacher, he, that, 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 that word really touched me. But what have you left with? What did you walk away with? Because he says you are just a listener. You are just a hearer, but not a doer. Now, let us look at what a doer does. Um... A doer 
listens and he allows the word to form shape. He allows because the word of God is like a seed. A doer listens to the word. That word becomes like a seed and then it germinates and then it becomes fruitful. It takes root and then it, it, it grows. It becomes fruitful. Now, the person who is a doer is, is, is not the same with the person who is a hearer because a hearer, he just listens and then when he walks away, he forgets. What a doer does is he compares, he compares these two with a person who has looked at himself in a mirror. You look at yourself in a mirror um, and you see, oh, my, my, my tie is crooked. I need to put it, um, 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 I need to put it together. Oh, my, my, my hair is, is not looking so well. Let me, let me put it back together. Um, I think I, 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 I have some, something in my teeth. Let me, let me clean it up. I have one, two, three, and four. Let me do one, two, three, and four. According to the word. When you read the word of God, it has a way of highlighting your issues from your strength to your weaknesses. The word of God is not only just a mirror, it is like a double-edged sword. It goes straight into your, in, into your situation. It goes straight into your reality. And the word um, reveals to you, you need more of patience. You need more of love. You need to be a little bit more kind. A doer decides because when I read the word, I felt convicted because this, the word of God will convict you. When you read the word and you feel convicted, there is one, two, three, and four that needs to be changed in me. A doer goes and now starts walking as a kind person because that word, um, 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 first it has, it has called them out. It has told them here and here it's, it's not proper. Or you need to increase your faith, so you need to read more of the Word of God. Or you need to listen to uh, more sermons concerning faith, just so that you can build up um, um, your faith. Or you need to speak more in tongues, just so that you can build up your faith as well. It says that in, um, 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 in, 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 in Jude. Um, so whatever it is that this person has to do, the doer goes and says, the word of God says, I need to be kind. So the next time when they are provoked, they remember to walk in kindness or patience. The next time they are tried in their patience, they remember to be patient. Why? Because a person who does not do so, the Bible says, is like a person who goes, looks at himself in a mirror and then walks away. And they forget how they looked at it like in the mirror. In other words, he's telling you, you would rather not look at yourself in the mirror if you're not going to make any corrections. Same way, you would rather not hear the word if it's not going to bring forth fruit in your life. He, he says, um, He talks about this person and says, this person now, who is supposedly, uh, is supposed to be walking in, uh, in the truth or in the perfect law. This is Jesus who has, ma has been made, um, has been made our sacrifice and not just a sacrifice. He has been made a salvation to us. Now, for us to know a person is a doer of the word of God. Is for when we start seeing the character and the life of Jesus Christ projected in this person's life. Then is when we know that this person has been receiving the word of God. And, and the, the, the receiving has, has made a permanent change. Because the Bible says we shall be changed and we shall look like him. This, we, we are not just waiting for that, uh, this change. We are not looking towards that change in the ends of time. But we are looking forward to that change even in the today's life. We will be looking like him. We will sound like him. It reminds me of, of, of in the book of Acts when they saw, when they saw the Peters and the Pauls and, the, and the, when they saw the apostles, they said, these people, they, they sound like they have been with that man, Jesus. 
they had stayed with Jesus long enough, the word that Jesus was speaking into their lives became life and became tangible and the world and the word became flesh and dwelt among us that word became flesh in their lives and now they were they were producing the characters of the lord jesus christ now he says in verse um he says in verse 25 but he who looks carefully into the perfect law the law of liberty and faithfully abides by it not having become a careless listener who forgets but an active doer who obeys he will be blessed and favored by god in what he does in his life of obedience it is the obedience towards the word of god that is going to make us blessed it is the obedience towards the word of God that is going to that is going to separate you, that is going to differentiate you from the rest of the people. Um, whoever it is that you see them blessed or they're walking in particular types of grace, watch, listen to what they speak, listen to what they also listen to. Try to find out what do they feed themselves with. And after they have listened to that word, what do they do? I have stayed around a people who would really they, they would they would challenge me in the way they hear a word the minute they hear a word like this they get up and do they will not wait somebody said partial obedience is disobedience ouch like when 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 we hear the lord saying trust me and we trust but not trust the bible or basically from this person who is saying partial obedience is disobedience simply means this person is also not trusting God and by not trusting God that is in doubt and without faith it is impossible to please God I keep repeating this because we listen to a lot um, 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 of sermons we listen to the word of God we listen to so many prophetic words however it gets to a place we have to just step back and evaluate all this that I've been listening to what permanent change do I have has my character changed not just character um, 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 do I affect the people around me do I do I do I show Jesus in my walk because when we have received the word the fruit of the spirit will also be very evident in our lives patience long suffering love kindness um, um self discipline all those things we will see them and 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 once we have seen them then we will know this person has either produced a hundredfold 60 or 30 as long as this person decided to receive and allow the word to work. Now, another thing that we also have to understand and learn is this, that the word of God is alive. The word of God is life in itself. There is a part where we work the word, but there is a part the word itself works. It is it is a two it is a two-way traffic we do our part and the word also does its part because the word is alive and the word can be can be as a seed it will just grow it, it some, some sometime later on it will germinate because it depends on the type of a seed there are some seeds when you when 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 you plant a, a particular seed today you will see the produce in two weeks three weeks four weeks you have the produce but there are some seeds when you receive them today you see the produce in a year three years four years Yes. So it depends on the seed that you have received, meaning it depends on the level of understanding of the word or it depends on, on, on what God wanted to build in you when he first spoke that word. So many of you have heard a particular word in your life from the time you were children and you kept hearing that word over and over and over again until it became a reality in your life. And 10 years later, 15 years later, 5 years later, you start walking according to that word. However, when you first heard it, highly likely you did not make much change. That's why you had to hear it again. And then you heard it again. And then you heard it again. And then you heard it again. And then one day it dawned on you when you decided 
to, to, to correct or when you decided to make that change or when you decided to take the step that you had to take so that you can leave the word of God. We hear the word of God. We meditate on it. And after we have meditated on it, we live um, um, according to that word. But not only that, after we have lived according to that word, we now start confessing that word. Let there be life that is produced out of your lips. Speak life, speak life, speak life, speak life. It is the same James who talks about the tongue. In James chapter number three, um, he talks about the tongue, and you can go and uh, you can go and read it by by yourself, but. But I want to read from uh, verse 2 and a few others. It says, For we all stumble and see in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, never saying the wrong thing, he is a perfect man, fully developed in character without serious flaws, able to bridle his whole body and reign in his entire nature, taming his human faults and wickedness. He's saying... If this person is able to tame their tongue, then they have grown into a place of maturity. That's why in the verse, um, in verse 22 of, of chapter of chapter one, he has spoken about this person is living in the perfect law of liberty. That is, uh, this this law is made perfect in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this person who has matured enough has the ability to tame their tongue. Um, verse 3 he says, Now if we put bits in the horse's mouth to make them obey us, we guide their whole body as well. And look at the ships. Even, even though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are still directed uh, by a very small rudder when, wherever the impulse of the hillsman um, determines. In the same sense, the tongue is a small part of the body and yet it boasts of great things. I like this particular uh, um, 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 line here. He says, it boasts of great things. Now, there are two ways of looking at the great things. You're either boasting of the great things of God or you're boasting of the great things of the enemy. A person who has been matured enough, who has heard the word of God, has meditated on it, has decided um, to look at the word of God as a mirror so that they make a change, then they become a matured person. And once they have become a matured person, now they are able to tame their tongue. Now they confess, they speak life, they have tamed their tongues, they speak the great things of God. He says that it's, 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 it's a rudder, it's like a small thing, but it has the ability to set a whole place on fire or it has the ability to bring forth life or to bring forth death so he says it's a small part of the body and yet it boasts of great things see by comparison how great a forest is set on fire by a small spark the word is a weapon and this weapon if if an immature person um, 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 if an immature person is given a weapon, they can either turn that weapon against their own, their own selves and finish their own selves, or they can turn that weapon to the enemy and finish the enemy. A matured person has the ability to tame their tongues. And when they're taming their tongue, they always turn um, 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 the, the word of God, which is a weapon, towards the enemy. And they finish the enemy by saying, I am the healed of God. I am the delivered of God. This is a season it will pass. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror. There is nothing that is impossible to them that believe. Whatever you confess, it is a small part of the body, but it has the ability to set a whole forest on fire. Your word can lead you to great places the word spoken or you taming your tongue can put you in high places you not taming your tongue can take you away from your blessings 
um, um, the, the, in chapter number one, he had spoken about a person who has decided to keep this perfect law will be blessed in their walk of obedience. When you have the word of God within you and you're about to, to, to turn um, um, the weapon against your own self, the word within you will tell you, you don't do that. And then you will tame your tongue and you will speak life instead. Now, there is plenty of news, there is plenty of negativity, but your tongue, which is, is, is a small part of the body, according to, 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 to this um, um, particular verse, that small part of the body, if you tame it, and if you decide in this season, I am speaking life, I am speaking victory, I am speaking increase, believe you me, you will set your forest on fire, meaning you will get that which we want. If you speak the great things, you will you'll get the great things. If you speak the evil things, you will get the evil things in good measure. The word of God once heard, it is received and we receive it with meekness and humility, with a spirit of ready to learn from God. And after we have learned, then we change according to what we have learned. And then it has an effect on how we behave. It has an effect on how we conduct ourselves, meaning we will be able to be matured people, to tame our tongues, to speak life. And, 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 and it goes hand in hand with the fact that you declare victory. You declare life. You declare that which only God would have spoken over your life if you met him. Many times we, 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 we speak as if there is, um, as if God is, is, is somewhere far, far, far away and is a, a distant God somewhere there. Uh, his voice is vague like you, you can't or you can hear him. It's sometimes yes, sometimes no. But whatever you speak, he hears. And that which he hears, he will do. Now, whether it is good or it is bad, the Bible says a great forest. The Bible says it has a way, the tongue has, has the ability to boast of great things. Whether a great thing in the evil or a great thing in the good, it shall be done unto you. So let's be careful with what we confess. A sense, um, 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 a sign of maturity is, 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 is also seen or determined by what we speak, how we speak, what we confess. Um, I, 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 I felt like we, we, should, we should deal with that. I felt like we should talk about that. Um, it might not be perfect, uh, a sermon, but if you keep reading that, if you keep meditating on it, you'll come to realize that most of the trouble that we found ourselves in was because we had declared that trouble beforehand. We had declared that great evil thing um, prior to, to, to when it happened. And most of the blessings we walk in, we had spoken those blessings um, before. Choose you today. Choose to speak life. He says, I have, I have put life and death right before you. Choose. By, 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 by speaking the word of God, you choose either the good things or the evil things. You can go ahead and, um, and, um, and read the rest, of the, the rest of the book of James. But I, I, I wanted us to be, to, to, to be encouraged. It might somehow, um, in a particular, in a sense, sound a little bit like um like hukemewa or something but really that's not what i want to, to you to receive from this i want you to be encouraged that your words matter your tongue is powerful it is small but extremely powerful so use it wisely especially in this season because what you speak is a result of what you heard God bless you. See you. Um, see you next time. I hope you were blessed. I would like to pray 
for anybody that wants to 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 receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives and I also want to pray for wisdom um, because the the, 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 the the same James says um, if you need wisdom if anybody needs wisdom let him ask from God because he's a generous God and he will give to all men generously I'm going to pray for wisdom that will be able to tame our tongues that will be able to speak that which we desire to see in our lives and I promise you the one who watches over his word to fulfill it he will fulfill his promises over you father God I speak a blessing over your people I speak wisdom over them in Jesus mighty name I speak strength over them in the greatest mighty name of Jesus let not the enemy get um, um, get 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 the best of them. Let not circumstances change their their speech. Let not circumstances um, um, make them profess the things that they're not supposed to be professing. Let them speak the goodness and the greatness of God in their lives. If at all they choose to do or to speak or to create great things using their tongue, then let them create the great presence of God in their lives, the great solutions in their lives. Let them speak. And, and, and become the solution givers in the greatest mighty name of Jesus. Let them be the source of peace and the source of light in this time of darkness in the greatest mighty name of Jesus. And let them choose to enjoy the presence and the glory of God even, um, 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 even when the, the surroundings speak otherwise. For the glory of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, cover them, protect them, and, and strengthen them. In Jesus' name we pray, O oh God. I pray, my God, my King, for everyone that is up, that wants to give their life to Jesus Christ let their hearts be open for those that are still closed up let their hearts be open let them receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives and if you are ready and you want to make a change in your life if you want to get to a place of being able to tame your tongue and control um, 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 the, 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 the whole scope of your life into destiny by the words of your lips just say these words with me say Lord Jesus come into my heart I know I need wisdom and I know you are the wisdom of God I need you in my life I receive you today as Lord and Savior of, 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 of my life and everything that I do Holy Spirit I welcome you I pray that you would teach me how to walk in the ways and the path that the Lord Jesus has laid ahead for me in the greatest mighty name of Jesus from today I am a new creation and I have been set free from the from from, from the power of sin and in Jesus mighty name I reign and rule with the Lord and sit at the right hand side of the Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, you can give. If you want to give kindly, there will be a number that will be um, that will pop up on your screen. Um, a Tigo Pesa number for those that want to use mobile money. And there will be a bank account uh, uh, for those that want to, to send straight to the bank account. You can give your tithe, your offerings, and your fast fruits, and any other giving that you want to do to give. Kindly send us a, a message in the Tigo line to, to explain um, what that giving is for. If it's a tithe, if it's a if it's a fast fruit or if it's any other um, um, type of giving, kindly indicate. And for those that gave their lives to Jesus Christ, um, there will also be a number that you can call if you are in need of prayers, if you are in need of guidance, we will be able to help you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Um, spend time with your family. Um, get to know them a little bit more. Um, enjoy their presence. Be safe and keep loving on the Lord. And remember to be watchful of the words that proceed out of your mouth. Come. God bless you. Amen. Now is the time to give your heart. And come just as you are to worship. Come just as you are before. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are to give your heart, I said come, just as you are.